Hi, everyone. Welcome to the EBA webinar learning series. My name is Aaron Smith. I'm the CEO of EBA, and I'm joined, as always, by Nancy Bakeman. Uh, happy 2021 to all of you. Uh, I'm really excited today to uh, have Brown Newtone uh, talking about the Obature product and connected indoor air quality. Uh, I've got a chance to see this project in, uh, product in the virtual booth at the uh, EBA Summit. And we've got two great folks here today to talk to us. Uh, Jim Bond is a director of project product management at EBA. And then Patrick Nielsen. Uh, Patrick is the global technical products manager at Brown Newtone. Patrick also sits on our manufacturer's advisory board for EBA. So just the standard housekeeping, we all know it by now, but uh, we have the Q&A section. That's the best way to submit questions. We will be taking questions throughout today. I'll curate those and then offer them up to the team um, as we're going through the presentation. But uh, with that introduction, uh, Patrick and Jim, I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you, Aaron. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, so I'll uh, be leading things off here with the first uh, half dozen slides or so. Uh, so to cover the, real briefly some of the topics we'll, we'll cover, I'll go over some you know, the importance of new home fresh air, some of the things that are changing in the industry, a little bit about ventilation codes and standards, and the new product that uh, Jim will be telling you about can, uh, can be set up to incorporate um, your, your code requirements. So that's, that's a key piece, one of the key features of this product. I'll talk about the three approaches to whole home ventilation, again, that you know, can kind of tie into our Overture Connected IEQ system. And then Jim will take it from there and go over some, you know, some quick facts and research and, and then get into some detail about our new Overture system that we're extremely excited about. So fresh air, you know, now it's more of a challenge than ever, of course. One of the factors is we're insulating and making our homes more airtight than, than ever. Um, no secret there. So whatever stale air is in the home, you know, that we breathe, humidity, you know, chemicals and so on, anything bad in the home pretty much stays in the home when you build as, as airtightly as we are today with our better, you know, windows, doors, air sealing uh, processes and so on. Here's a little chart that, that shows that um, for a lot of builders out there, you're probably familiar with something called a blower door test, a building air leakage study. Um, so back in the 70s, the average home, new home was about 12 air changes per hour. So when you think about that, every five minutes, the air in the home is changing over just natural infiltration, leaky doors and windows. Obviously good for fresh air, but uh, not good for energy efficiency. And you look at today, you know, we're in the low single digits on our building tightness. So we've made great strides as an industry, you know, especially the, the EBA, you know, builder members out there. But now we have to think about um, also ensuring indoor, good indoor air quality. An another key difference a lot of people I think don't think about is that windows are open a lot less often. You know, you think back to the 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, you know, a lot of families modern uh, monitored their indoor temperature just by do we open or close the windows today? You know, a nice day for a breeze or whatever the case may be. But now, you know, last 20 years or so, pretty much every home has central air conditioning. So most families just keep the windows closed and, you know, with, with more rare exception and just, you know, use their furnace and air conditioner to monitor temperatures. That has its upsides for convenience, but again, we're not letting any fresh air into the home. So that, that's a big change today. So I'll talk to you a little bit about um, standards. So a lot of you are probably familiar with ASHRAE 62.2. So that's the, the standard for low rise residential ventilation. Um, you know, a bunch of smart ASHRAE guys got together and said, here's how we think you need to ventilate a home for good indoor air quality. So this standard is updated every three years uh, with some addendums in between. California and maybe one or two states in the Northeast uh, adopt it more directly, reference it more directly, but more, much more often than not, it makes its way into state and city codes via the I codes, um, IRC, the Residential Code, Energy Conservation Code. These codes, you know, when it comes to ventilation, they reference this ASHRAE standard. So it's um, very common. Uh, requirements in terms of ventilation. 
And again, our new overture system that Jim will tell you about, um, you know, you can enter these as inputs that you want to meet these requirements and the system will um, ensure that that happens. In addition to some of the basic codes, almost every above code program out there, you know, Energy Star, Energy Star Indoor Air Plus, LEED, uh, Well, Passive House, require whole house mechanical ventilation in addition to your spot or local ventilation. Um, so again, you know, our new product will, will allow you to do both. And then just real quickly here, you know, if you're not familiar, this is uh, a table showing how much um, fresh air you need. So the ASHRAE requirements, again, this is the 2010 version, which the vast majority of states and cities reference. California and a couple others are starting to reference newer models, but, and, and with our overture system, you can put in this older version or the newer version, but it's based on, you know, number of bedrooms and square footage. And then that will, this chart will tell you how many CFM of continuous fresh air you need to get in, you know, get the stale air out and get the fresh air in. Here's a, a, a quick code map. This is something we have grown really monitor here. I mentioned the I codes, uh, residential code and energy efficiency code. So as you can see, uh, all the different states and cities can be on different versions of those codes. Um, any state or city that's on a 2012 or later version of generally speaking, the I codes are gonna require that whole house continuous ventilation. So this is, uh, you know, not to memorize this map, but this, you know, shows you how we're tracking this and, uh, are well aware of, um, you know, which states and cities have which codes and, you know, take that into account as we're uh, developing overture. And lastly, um, in terms of my slides, there's three ways to achieve. Um, in this slide, we call it DUV or dwelling unit ventilation. That's another term for whole house um, continuous ventilation. The ASHRAE standard uses the term DUV, dwelling unit ventilation. So the three approaches are one exhaust, you know, let's for instance, run a bath fan 24 hours a day, pull the stale air out at, you know, whatever 60 CFM or whatever the requirement is. And then fresh air will make its way in, you know, through the remaining small holes and nooks and crannies in the home. The opposite of that is supply. Let's push 60 CFM of fresh air into the home and the stale air will get pushed out through the little holes left over in the envelope. And then the best solution, of course, is balanced. Here we're going to use something like an H and ERV. Um, ideally, you want to use a unit like this that has heat and energy recovery. And there we're going to uh, mechanically ensure that both 60 CFM is getting pushed out and 60 is being brought in. And again, with um, if you use an H or ERV for your balanced, you can ensure that you're getting um, you know energy recovery, keeping the heat and humidity out in the summer and maintaining it in the winter without running up your utility bills. So those are the three basic ways. And again, as, as Jim will describe here, um, our overture system will allow, you know, these different pieces of your whole house system to, you know, be connected and ensure they're working at the proper times. Patrick, you talked a lot about, um, you know, the code and green building standards and the requirements. Can you boil it down to the why? It, I will tell you, I run into people every day that they don't understand why they need fresh air in their home. Yeah, it's really, you know, Jim will get into some more detail of thinking about all the pollutants in the home. Again, you know, we shower, we, we cook, you're generating all kinds of um, humidity, which is, you know, can lead to other problems, including mold. We cook, we're learning more and more that cooking, you know, leads you are producing something called PM 2.5, particulate matter 2.5 microns or less that can go right through your lungs and into your bloodstream. Um, bad news, obviously. Um, if you're cooking with gas, you're generating nitrogen dioxide. Again, not a good thing. So, um, and you just think of when you, when you build a home, you know, there's your new carpets are off gassing formaldehyde and, you know, VOCs coming off your cabinets and paint. So it can take years for all that stuff to really you know, off gas and, you know, um, so that stuff is just lingering. So, uh, you know, with COVID, uh, you know, 2020, I think that really opened people's eyes to indoor air quality importance of that, you know, hopefully, 
you know, the world's getting our arms around the COVID problem with vaccines and so on. But, you know, the fact that people um, are extremely attuned to healthy indoor air for their family, you know, that's not going to go away. So, um, you know, again, a lot of builders, we understand are changing their messaging in some cases or adding the messaging that, you know, not just we're efficient builders, we're healthy builders as well. So um, extremely important. Thank you, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Okay, so welcome everyone. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into what, what Pat was referring to. Um, again, our project here, and we'll get to the product, is it was pre-COVID, so we didn't even know the term COVID even existed at that time. But um, as, a, as a ventilation company um, and a fresh air company, um, we know that uh, good indoor quality is so critical to, to many things that we do. And you know, we're, we're, not, we're not medical um, experts um, so we do rely on a lot of things like the EPA and, and many, many articles out there, which I'm sure each of you have read one or another at one time or another. Um, but again, some facts about our home is, again, they're, they're being built and remodeled more energy efficient. Um, and just take the remodel part of it. Uh, most of us during this COVID time um, spent a lot of money on, on updating our homes because we didn't go on vacations. We didn't spend the money that we maybe elsewhere spent it. So, um, I'm taking my home that may be leaky and, and make it more energy efficient. So I have uh, lower, lower bills and I just feel more comfortable in, in that home. Um, and with that, we spent more time. We're spending about 90% of our time inside and outside. And, and that's over the last 10 to 15 years that that's really been true. Where people with technologies and televisions that are, that are better and better and games and all these many different things, whether it's young or old, they're spending more and more time inside. Um, we, we go to work, we spend a lot of time at work, we go home, we spend a lot of time there. And, and if we're not outside uh, doing yard work or doing some activity outside, I mean, it seems like inside where we're at and, and our activities are, even, even our fun activities are, are inside. So it's-, hey, it's Jeff, Yes. Just a quick note, your audio is dropping out intermittently. So I don't know if- Okay, yeah, just, let me, let me um, get a little bit closer then. Um, okay. so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we understand that being inside is, is is great, um, but we need to make sure that we understand what our indoor air quality is. And with that, we contribute, there's a lot of things that contribute to that, and Pat alluded to some of them, um, but moisture, whether we're taking showers or whether we're cooking, moisture is brought up into our air. And what we don't realize is that molds and mildews and things like that are in the air, even though we can't normally see them. We normally see them when they build up to a point where we, they're, they're, they're resident now on, on a surface, um, off gas, you know, whether it's cooking, whether it's um, whether it's new carpet uh, that we may put in our homes or furnitures, things like that, particulates, and, and, and like I said before, cooking. So all these things have been existing for many, many years. I mean, uh, way back to, to grandparents and, the, and, and many years before that. So it's not that it's new to us. It's that we're, we're getting smarter and understanding more and more about it. It's not because our homes are being more energy efficient that we're learning about this. It's just that, you know what, as times change, uh, we learn different things and we take note to different things. Uh, so we as a company um, have been doing this for many years, um, going on 87 years, and uh, we're, we're, we're trying to, again, bring it as a more important factor to all of our lives that we need to understand. So what are these some, some of these common pollutants? Again, we talked about indoor air quality and our indoor air quality is actually worse than the outdoor quality today. And yeah, when there's a forest fire in, 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 in the California mountains or, or there's pollution in, in a major city like like uh, New York City or the major metropolitan cities like Chicago, Los Angeles. Um, yeah, maybe our indoor air is better, but in, in general, our indoor air is not as good as outdoor air. And so we're talking about 90 times, 90% uh, time spent indoors, but it's two to five more times polluted because of all the activity that we have inside. And what we need to do is we need to understand that so that we can do something about it. And what I wanna do is just go through a, a couple of these common indoor air pollutants that maybe for most of us is, yeah, okay, we know, we know about these things, but when you start thinking about it, um, the more and more things that we do at homes, whether it's buying new, new furniture, new things, whether it's just airborne particles that are in there that are, it could be smoke, it could be dust because um, we just vacuumed and we're creating, creating or stirring up the dust. It could be exhaust from outside, um, whether I just drove in my garage, close my garage door, open my door to come in my house, some of those gases are coming into my home. Again, not huge volumes, but over time, it does have an effect on our, on our health and our well-being. Um, the ozone outside, again, every time we open the door, open a window, 
um, good and bad can be coming in. And again, how do we regulate that or how do you understand what that is for the overall air and indoor air quality in our homes? Um, household gases and odors and things that we do, um, cooking and painting, um, candles, um, air fresheners, all those things are, they may be good um, and they are good. You know, they're, they're not all bad, but again, how can we regulate that and how can we manage that so we understand how much of it is good to the point that it does get bad. And, and again, that's, that's what we're really trying to talk about today. And hopefully uh, our, our overture system is gonna help um, let people understand that. It's not really changing the way people or, or turning off things that people do today. Maybe it's just making adjustments and, and understanding, hey, I, I may not have to light candles all the time because it's not really good for, for me, but to have it as an ambiance or, or something once in a while is, is a good thing. And then carbon dioxide. A lot of people don't realize that, uh, yeah, it comes from many different things, but the, the biggest factor is, is people. And, and with every breath that we take, and we take anywhere from 20,000 to 25,000 breaths a day, um, we, we, we're exhaling carbon dioxide every single moment that we do that. So um, when you think about it, it's, it's, again, it's not bad, but if we can control it, um, um, we can make it better for ourselves in, in the way we So a lot of the stuff that you see on the page is, is, is probably pretty familiar. You know, we open the door and open, open our windows and we get nice fresh air. Um, we all love to cook, we all love to, to eat in. Um, and even when we eat out and you go into a restaurant, you're, you're again, smelling these things that are, that are happening, these VLCs, um, PM2.5, CO2, all those factors are, are out there. And then again, cleaning products. Um, we need them. We, we can't not clean our homes and, and, and live into a, or have our homes turn into a, a, a place where it's not, not healthy because we didn't clean them. Um, but we just need to understand what do all these things do for us and um, how, can we, how can we manage our, our daily living to, to be a little bit more healthy than what we did before. Um, and then it's all the new things that we get, you know, um, whether it's a toy, whether it's furniture, whether it's carpet or, or painting, like I said before, um, all these are factors that we have to just consider and just make adjustments. And it's sometimes just small adjustments just to understand what we need to do or just a simple thing of turning on a fan to exhaust um, some of these fumes that we really can't either smell in large doses and or that we can't see. And so again, this is what we wanna try to get across to you today. So what are these pollutants? And you know, I, I showed the home before and, and listed off all the, the five boxes, but let me kind of go a little bit more detail. When we talk about the, the, the formaldehydes or the off gases, it's, it's PM 2.5 and TVOCs. And I'm gonna go through these, these, uh, these terminologies because this is what people are hearing. You know? um, it's particulate matter at 2.5 microns or smaller. And those are, those are matters that are smaller than a hair, than, than, than the size of a hair, you know, the thickness of a hair. And so when you, when you really think about it, we can't see these things from the naked eye. Um, under a microscope, yes, we can do that. TVOCs, you know, they're created um, and, and they're, again, they can be invisible. They can be things like grease off of your, off of your cooking or, or they can be invisible gases that are coming off. Um, so it's important to understand that, you know, these things, even though we don't see it, they, they happen to be everywhere we go. And so how can we help we manage and control them, at least understand about them. Then we talk about particulate matters or about, about just general things. It's CO2, PM2.5 and TVOCs. Um, we talk about the outside of the ozone, it's PM2.5 these TVOCs, when we talk about all those cleaning products and all the different products that we use, um, whether it's food products and or, and or the cleaning products, um, painting, upgrading our homes, doing things for our homes, caulk, um, any of those types of things that we use that we do get a whiff of us or smell or scent from. Um, again, large doses of those things are telling things. So again, how do we, how do we control it? So we're talking about CO2, PM2.5 and TVOCs. And then finally, when we talk about the CO2, it's CO2 and TVOCs. And so again, many of these things come with everyday things that we do, whether it's our, our, our favorite pets walking to our home, our children playing and, and playing on the carpet or playing on the floor, um, dust erupting from there. Um, if you ever look in the sunlight coming into your, into your home and you see these little furry things kind of floating through the air, those are, those are the dust particles that we can see, but there's much smaller ones that we can't see. And those are the PM 2.5s and PM ones and, and PM tens that we're talking about um, that again, in, in, in a relative sense, if we keep our home clean, it's good. But uh, the more we can turn that air around and, and, and exchange air like Pat was referring to, uh, the better it'll be for our, our overall 
lungs and our overall health that we that we you know live in a large percentage of our time each day. When we look at that again, talked about the CO2s, PM 2.5s, and the VOCs. We can't forget about temperature. Every time we turn up the thermostat, turn it down, wherever it may be, that that adjusts the all the relative humidity in our homes, and and these are things that are kind of silent and that we don't see also. And and when we talk about these things, it's that humidity, it's that moisture in the air that we got to make sure it's balanced. Um, relative humidity um, is anywhere from forty to sixty percent. Is that ideal temperature or humidity level that we want to have? When it gets too high, we see moisture on windows, we see moisture on on mirrors or walls or ceilings. Um, when we get too dry, um, I, I, again, it's hard for us to breathe. Our, our nose is maybe too dry and, and, and feels like, man, I need something just to, just to get some, some fresh air or some humidity in the air. So all these things have to be, have to be regulated. And, and again, we have, we have furnaces, we have um, systems on there to, 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 to put the humidity or to put uh, moisture into the air. Um, but again, is it doing it at the levels we need to? Is that the right levels that we really want to? And uh, a lot of us uh, are, are very interested in that. We think we have it controlled, um, but again, hopefully we can show you a system today that'll, that'll do it automatically for you. So what is happening to us? Okay. When you look at the many things that the EPA puts out, again, they're not mandating things, um, but they're, they're very concerned as a federal government agency that we do have good air, indoor air quality, um, not only in our homes, but in the buildings and places that we work. Um, but again, the short-term and long-term effect is that it does affect us. So we, when we talk about um, uh, CO2 and those types of things in the air, um, we got to be concerned about those things and just at least take note to it and, and, and learn more about it and, and understand it more. We're not going to become scientists about it, but what we can do is understand what it really means to us. So there's many different things out there that um, research is pieces of research that, again, 5 to 14 percent of, of our estimated annual not communicable um, disease is indoor air pollution. Um, the global uh, number is anywhere from 5 million to 7 million people die per year because of, because of, of, of these uh, indoor air quality or indoor air pollution. Um, and in the U.S., it's about 250,000 people per year. Um, uh, of course, with the COVID um, here, um, maybe if we were to re react it beforehand, would we have had maybe less deaths? M maybe so, right? Um, that's for all for each one of us to look and consider for our own selves. Um, but again, from a, from a company perspective, we really want to educate people and say, you know what, there's some, th some really quick things that you can do to, to help yourselves. And then Harvard University, again, they, they're looking at concentrations of CO2 and, and, and those types of things that, again, if it was just lowered by 15%, um, we could really help our, ourselves out um, with a, a healthier indoor um, air situation. When we talk about uh, Berkeley Labs, um, they're looking at dampness and again, what is that relative humidity and the temperature um, response in there? And this all relates to people that have asthma and people have other lung breathing problems that again, we may be fortunate enough or you may be fortunate enough not to have. Um, and I'm very fortunate not to have it, but, it, but again, there's a, many, many people, young and old, that deal with uh, bronchitis and asthma and different lung problems that again, a good indoor air quality could help that and make them more comfortable, not necessarily take the disease away or take it away, but hopefully make it more comfortable and, and, and less of a stress on their bodies and their, their lives. And then finally, um, we talk about uh, other things like PM 2.5. PM 2.5 are those things that, again, that we don't think about often, you don't hear very often, but it's simple things like vacuuming and, and suggestions that uh, uh, cooking and dusting and running your clothes dryer and making sure they're ventilated correctly so that that, that exhaust is not coming back in. It may, it may feel good because it's warm or may feel because it's moist, but um, it's bringing in other things again that you can't see. And again, uh, uh, many different um, colleges, universities, research firms are, are doing things and scientists are out there uh, doing these things. There's plenty of information out there and uh, just bringing you a little bit just to kind of hopefully widen our eyes a little, widen our eyes a little bit uh, that there's an issue out there and that we all need to take note of it in some, in some way, shape or form. So homeowners, um, there's, there's a lot of research that says they, they're interested. Uh, Hammy Wood has done many, many different pieces of research that says, you know, people do want to improve their, their way of life and, and what they do. And that's why people, you know, maybe go buy a new home. Maybe they re remodel their home, they paint their home. Um, maybe that's why they light a candle or, or have fresh air sense in, in their homes. Um, but to understand it better and do it better, um, more and more people are willing to pay 
Um, and you can see up at 83% of those people who really want to spend more home for a healthier home. Is that healthier home taking out carpet so I don't have uh, all that dust and wood flooring? Maybe that's the way we do it. Um, but again, a lot of homes have bathroom fans, range hoods, and those types of things. Um, but many people aren't using them to the level that they need to. And, and again, this is where we as a company are really stressing the fact that you have a lot of things already in your home that you can really start on this tomorrow. Um, it's just a matter of understanding what to do and how to do it. And then finally, um, uh, people more concerned about indoor air quality. This goes back to 2015 and uh, some recent research that even continues to indicate that, again, a large majority of people, more than 50%, um, do want to improve their indoor air quality. I think the big question is, how do I do that? And, and, and what steps do I need to take? Um, so again, a lot of people are managing um, their IAQ by, by sensing, right? They, they have uh, um, um, any type of detectors, as you can see on here, that, that tell me what my PM 2.5 may be, what my temperature mean may be. And again, a lot of people are trying to take that effort um, with companies um, putting things out there that are actually showing it. And the great thing about it is, um, Sure, advance this here. They're all measuring and they indicate a, you know, a, a quality of indoor air um, as high, medium, or low. And, and they're, they're indicating those things. Um, but the, the, the major issue that, that we can do is what are we doing about it? And so it's great to say, hey, my temperature is or it's hot at my home. I can really walk over to my thermostat and turn it down. And from there, I can, I can regulate my temperature. Um, I may be able to regulate my my humidity because I have a, a control also for relative humidity on my, on my uh, furnace. Um, but what we really need to do as we look at it is everybody's got to think of that their house is, a, is an ecosystem and that indoor air in that, in that home, that ecosystem, we have, to, we have to try to control. So as we look at it, we really want to make sure that we can educate people more and more on what it really means with what their indoor air quality is in their home. Uh, the second thing is we want to measure it in, in order to measure it and understand it. And you got to have to you have to have devices to be able to tell you what that is, um, besides just feeling hot or feeling. Um, then we got to ventilate, um, and and Pat talked about ventilation about again tighter homes and, and building homes more efficient. Um, that we had those cracks and crevices and everything else that that kind of managed it before, but you know now we have to we have to rely on ventilation like bathroom fans and range hoods and those types of things that that ventilate. And then filtration is important. Um, whether we have Good filtration or just a simple filtration on our furnaces? Are we are we changing out those filters as often as we as we need to? And are we understanding what the filtration level really needs to be when we bring air in and bring air out? So we want to make sure that we again manage that that quality of that air. Um, and then air purification. A lot of people have had purchased air purifiers and become more and more prominent in on, on site and in, in, in stores. Um, and they're good. Uh, they're really good. Um, but depend upon what you get, it's maybe very located, very maybe in a room only and not, not for your whole home. So again, we're talking about the whole home ecosystem. And so how, do, how are we managing that? And then like we, like we mentioned more than once, fresh air, how do we bring fresh air continuously in the home? Um, when we turn on our furnace, it's not bringing in fresh air. It's, it's taking the, the existing air and it's, it's recycling that air. Um, the fresh air that we get today is opening the door, opening a window. So um, we, do have, uh, we do have options obviously to bring in fresh air and there's many companies that have options out there, um, but it is important for us to continue to bring fresh air as we um, get rid of bad air. So with that, we, we, we come to Overture and Pat's talked about what that one was, uh, trying to fix the, the audio here, but uh, in, in Q2 of 2021, we're gonna be launching the system and the system's really gonna consist of uh, three hardware pieces um, that uh, will, will help you um, sense and, and manage the, the automation of the, of the system. Smart and connected, so it is an app that's going to be driving it. But once you get it set up, it's it's ready to roll, and then um, it's going to cover your own home. So it's really going to manage the whole home environment, and not just maybe a small area or small room of your home. Just like your furnace takes care of your whole home, and and if you have more than one zone within your home, it's even better yet. And so what it's really going to do is really going to monitor um, your home. It's going to sense the pollutants. It's going to activate certain things within your home, and it's going to it's going to take that air that's that's sitting there and maybe stale. Um, and move it around or move it out and move fresh air in. Um, so you always have clean, fresh air within your home environment. Now, what are those devices? When we look at those devices, the first one's a wall control. 
it's a wall control that goes in a, that'll replace a, a standard wall control. Um, because of the, the depth of the, where the sensors and everything are, you have to use a, an extra deep box or a three and a half inch in deep box. Um, but most of these, these uh, wall controls will go into a kitchen or a bathroom. Um, and they'll be hooked up to your bath fan or your ventilation device, whether it could be in a laundry room. Um, nowadays, um, dens, many different other rooms also have uh, some type of ventilation system in it. Um, it could be out in your garage. Um, or it could be connected to your range hood in your in your in your um, kitchen, and uh, it, the the kitchen is the most polluted, or where the most pollution does come from is in your kitchen. So it's important to, to think about that factor. Um, and uh, uh, one day when we don't have uh, have to hook it up directly, um, hopefully we can get Wi-Fi systems and things like that that are integrated into products um, that'll that'll also um, be able to react to the system overall. Um, and these uh, this wall control will sense temperature. It'll sense relative humidity, VOCs, and carbon dioxide. So again, we talked about many of those before in, in other, other slide, um, slides. And uh, what it'll do is, uh, again, it'll sense it. You can see the green mark around, uh, green light around it. It'll turn green, um, yellow, or red. Green means good, obviously. Yellow means the stage is getting close to uh, the air being more and more polluted. So uh, the, the system will activate once it turns yellow. And it may go to red if you're cooking and you got some extreme things going on, um, but eventually as, as you uh, decrease that activity, um, it'll go down to yellow, then eventually go down to green. Uh, you have a room sensor. Room sensor can be put anywhere into any standard 120 volt outlet. Um, you simply plug it in. It's got a, a plug to it also, so you don't lose the, the plug that you're actually are utilizing by, by plugging in the room sensor. Um, and these normally will go in your bedroom, living room, home office, basements, go to areas where you don't have a, a ventilation fan or you don't have a wall control. Um, and the great thing about the room sensor is it does uh, true uh, carbon CO2 um, um, sensing and does additional PM 2.5. So this is where you get that PM 2.5 activity. Um, so when you think about great rooms in your home, we have a lot of family activity or parties um, around a uh, maybe a kitchen island. Um, again, this, this type it can be monitored and, and understood what's going on. And then finally, we have a smart plug. Now, there's no sensors in the smart plug, um, but what it does is it actually, actually talks to um, the cloud and actually um, talks to these two other devices that sense and tells it to turn on when, when these devices are activated and have a, a yellow or a red signal to them. Um, with that, you can plug in ERVs and HRVs. <clears throat> you can plug in fresh air systems, makeup air dampers, and or air purifiers. And so you can imagine this down in your basement where you may have an ERV, HRV. And when my sensor wall control goes off, or my room sensor goes off, it's going to activate my ERV, HRV. So as I'm ventilating out um, a bad air, I'm bringing in fresh air to replace that. So I have a balanced air system in my home and I don't have negative or too much negative or too much positive air pressure. So with the system, <clears throat> we have an app. Um, which has a, an API management layer, application layer, and definitely a connected platform where we all hook up it to. And so once you, once you have um, installed your wall controls and plugged in your room, room uh, sensors and uh, uh, found a spot for your smart plug, um, you will have uh, uh, an app. Um, the app is free. Um, you'll download it. You'll get free updates. Um, and what you simply do is you, you download the app, and then the app will actually walk through and tell you what to do. To tell you how to plug into, uh, how to connect um, and pair all these devices, the wall control, the room sensor, and the smart plug. And once you get them all um, assigned to a room and plugged in and ready to go, um, the system does itself. Um, you, you turn it on and let it go. And then finally we have, it'll be also connected to third-party applications. So it'll be uh, Alexa and Google where you can actually talk to it and actually um, ask questions like, yeah, how's my indoor air quality? And Google or Alexa will answer back and say, hey, your indoor air quality was good today. And overall, there were no activations. So again, we want to make it as friendly as possible, as easy as possible. And once it's set up, it'll automatically work for you. So like I said before, the first step is signing in and, and downloading the app, um, setting up your home with some very simple things like square footage, um, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms, the number of floors. And to that point, the ASHRAE system kicks in. Um, it'll automatically tell you um, as you start onboarding your, your bath fans and your kitchen um, ventilation um, um, devices, it'll actually tell you which one will be your whole house ventilation um, device. 
And with that, ASHRAE is automatically um, um, calculating what, which device that'll be. Um, it'll print out a document so that uh, your builder, um, if, if they're building a home for you, um, or if you're having it checked out, actually print out a report and actually show the, the uh, inspector that, uh, yes, it's been ASHRAE um, um, reviewed. It's been actually calculated, actually calculated with the ASHRAE standards and uh, this device does, does do it. So now you don't have to necessarily have an inspector actually test the different um, fans. It'll actually tell which one it is. And it's done by uh, several of uh, the information databases that we have, um, especially for the Brome products that actually have in there what the CFMs are for each of these devices and whether they have lights or no lights or that type of thing. So all that will be um, stored up in the cloud and, and automatically do it for um, the homeowner setting us up or the builder setting us up. Step two is again, each room that you want monitored and you, you hook the things up, you connect the devices and, and you're ready to go. Um, and then again, automatic voice activation. Um, Jim, are you able to add other uh, manufacturers devices to the system? Yeah, so so in the in the cloud, we, we will have our information in there, obviously, because we know what it is, mm -hmm. but then include anybody from using a, a competitor's um, product. What they'll have to know is they'll have to know CFMs and those types of things. And again, as you walk through the setup It'll ask you what is what is the CFM, what is the what is the uh, um, other information that it's going to be needed. To get the Great, thank it's you. Not specific to Brone um, or Newtone products, um, but what it does do is it if you have a Brone or Newtone product, it automatically do it for you by entering the model number is all you're going to need to know with that device. Um, but any other product, um, uh, you 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 have to pair it up, um, or, or excuse me, it'll be hooked up with the um, via the wall control, and then. You to fill out the information so it can cal uh, uh, calculate the ASHRAE um, calculation for you properly. So Jim, in a way, is the wall control kind of acting as the gateway for the system? The wall control is is the gateway for the system. Um, and that's where the, the everything yeah, kind of walks through and talks to. Great. Thank you. Okay. So we, we Brown have been, been at this um, well into early 2019 um, and we continue to do field testing today. And uh, what we really want to do is uh, again, find out more about it. So we really need to, to, to talk to many people, um, do a lot of testing out in the field, really understand what does this mean of PM 2.5 and TDOCs and how they react in the homes and everything. And if you look at the bottom results there, um, the, the World Health Organization EPA limits, um, we found that 54% of the time Pollutant levels in the kitchen, this is where the pollutant levels are really created, or 35% in bathrooms and 35% in bedrooms. And you go, hmm, bedrooms, what do I do in my bedroom? Well, if any one of us, obviously, we all sleep in our bedrooms every evening. Um, and we take a, a lot of breaths each night as we breathe in and out, and CO2 is created. Now, if I shut my door, um, it even encapsul and, you know, captures all that, all that CO2 in the room. So when you think again about pollutants, let's not think about hazy, foggy, you know, mist in my, in my, in my, in my home. It's things that we can't see. And, and all along I've been talking about that it's those hidden things that we gotta be careful of because those hidden things, we inhale them into our, into our bodies and some of them can't escape. And when they don't escape, where do they go? They can get lodged into your, into the walls and cavities of your lungs. And so this is, this is the things that we're trying to look out for and, and understand more and more and, and trying to help eliminate or, or, or lessen um, as we as we go along, so can we uh, control indoor air quality? Um, sure, we can. And and with Overture, um, I think hopefully you're, you're understanding that um, there's poor indoor indoor air quality by sensors. Um, those sensors then um, activate something to to bring fresh air by ventilating, by bringing fresh air and moving air around. Um, and again, it's more than moving air around; it's exchanging air. It's exchanging air out of your home and bringing fresh air into. As we go on and on with this with this program, we're going to be looking at things like uh, you know what's the outdoor air and how do we condition the outdoor coming in. And ERV, HRVs do that type of thing. They actually bring it in, filter it, um, purify it, and make it even better than when it was outside. Has its brought inside. Um, so all this is done automatically. And once you get the system and, set, um, and maybe just to just to, just to expound on that a bit, Jim, I mean, some people obviously in the Western part of the country are concerned with the outdoor air quality, maybe during a, a fire event. Will there be a way to monitor outdoor air as well? Yeah, so we, the initial, our initial launch doesn't do that, but we have that already in the pipeline. Okay. Hey, if my outdoor air is not as good as my indoor air, 
I'm, I'm gonna I'm not gonna bring the elevator in at this point. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep what I have and 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 uh, cycle my air, you know, accordingly that way. Um, but eventually, we're gonna we gotta find ways to take bad outdoor air and uh, bring in good air out there, you know, make that outdoor air uh, better air. So again, we're looking at many different options and, and new products to to be able to do things like that. Fantastic. Okay. So so with that, um, again, we know we only had an hour. Uh, we wanted to leave time for for questions and answers. Um, does anybody have any any questions or anything about? Yeah, so uh, one of the questions we had is, do you see any challenge with the sensors sensing the conditions inside the wall rather than the room ambient air? I mean, when it comes to the wall control, you're saying? Yeah, so you're plugged in at the outlet. You know, are you getting some, but you know, are you getting some sensing from something that might be inside the wall uh, opening? Well, so if we, if we take like the room sensor, room sensor plug into a plugged in, plugged in, right? Or we look at the wall control that's like you say in a box in a wall. Um, no, those those are all sealed off. So again, there's vents and and um, if you look at the products and let me quick check the products here. If you look at the products, there's vents on the outside. That's where the that's where the air is coming in. So if you look at the side of the the room sensor, for example, those slits and there's even more than what what you you see here, but they're. Yeah cosmetically and very designed very nicely. Um, there's there's outlets out there that are doing it. So unless there's a, a huge amount of leakage around that that uh, that uh, outlet, for example, um, you 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 could be getting something from those walls. But again, is that coming from the outside or is most of that you know within your cavities of your home anyways that you're actually, actually sensing? The same thing on the room. The the actual box itself is enclosed on the back end, but it's all around that perimeter of that cavity that you're actually sensing or taking the air that's that's within your home. Great. Jim, are you able to talk to carbon monoxide or radon sensors in the home as well and, and uh, operate those? So within within our within our studies, um, we, we know that the, the PM 2.5 carbon dioxides, uh, the temperature, humidity, those were the key ones, VOCs, those are the key ones that are created, you know, time and time and time again, 80%, yeah. 90% of the time. We do know that obviously many homes, and it's a, it's been a, a, a bigger practice obviously for buying new homes. And I, again, I live in Wisconsin, and yes, when I bought a new home, um, what's the radon levels, things like that. Um, we don't have that today. We don't have carbon dioxide radon um, today. Um, but again, those are things that we're looking forward to. And what okay. we want to do is we want to get a simple system that would work for the majority of things, and then expand out as we go forward because we know there's issues today just with these these these. Uh, five things that we talked about today. Great. Jim, what about calibration of the sensors? Is there a requirement to recalibrate over time? No, what we've done, and, and this is what we're doing with our with our field tests and everything is um, our engineering group, along with our outside sources or suppliers have taken the best of those sensors that, that work within this cavity, the size that we need, all those, all those parameters. And uh, we don't need to go ahead and, and, and calibrate and recalibrate them. So we, we picked very, very good quality sensors. And uh, we believe that uh, the life of these sensors are well beyond the 10 years um, that they'll be calibrated and be accurate with what they have to do. Oh, that's great. Uh, lots of interest in, and I just want to have you reiterate this, but lots of interest in buying one. I think, you know, the most dangerous part of my, about my job, Jim, is I go to these and then I see something else I want for my own home. Right. <laughs> Uh, but the question is, when will home builder, homeowners or builders be able to buy the overture? So we are, we are again, in the final phases of our, of our testing and, and preparing our, our launch activities. Um, the plan is that uh, in the second quarter of 2021, so coming up very quickly here, that we will be um, launching this program. And our, and our first focus is to builders. Um, again, uh, what we need to make sure is we get the, the right message out to, to the homeowner. And the best way to do that is, is via builders, especially with new homes. Um, but that doesn't mean that it won't be available in, in certain pro-channel um, outlets and distributions like maybe electrical distributors, that, that type of place where it makes logical sense that they would be sold first. From that perspective, it may expand um, online and beyond that. But, but again, we're trying to make sure that we, we the, the right message gets out there, the right, the right idea of what this, what this overture program really is and then we want to expand it from there. We're not going to go all out and 
bringing in Home Depot and Lowe's and all these different uh, channels out there. And then the message gets lost out. out sure. We want to make sure that the right message is done from the beginning. And then we expand uh, appropriately as we, as the message is, as the message grows and is understood clearly by it all. Yeah. Well, I think it's a, a fantastic product for builders. Those of us that are trying to build healthier homes and are using that as a differentiator, this product really helps uh, set people apart. I love that it works with some of the existing products we're all already using, but makes them smarter as well. Right. Yeah. And in the future, as things get more and more connected, um, whether it's a bath fan or whether it's a range hood or other, other devices like an air purifier, um, it'll, it'll hook up. It'll hook all, all automatically to the system um, because it's all Wi-Fi driven. We only use Bluetooth right. to pair them up. And from there, it's all Wi-Fi driven. Right. So if you have, I mean, the... The wall control is going to go on the outlet where I'm controlling my bath fan from, for example. Sure. But what about on my on my range hood? Do I need? Do I wire? Yeah. The yeah so right. So right now, um, really, ADA or or the you know the ADA American Disabilities Act um, type of range hoods, where they actually require a uh, wall control um, to be up to them. So if you had a range hood today in your in your kitchen, I could take and wire a wall outlet to that and make it ADA compliant if I if I needed to. Okay. And not all not all range hoods, so you got you got to check on on the specific one you have, but you could connect it to that. Um, again, once, once our range hoods become Wi-Fi capable, um, which yeah. which uh, will be soon, um, then you know what you don't have to worry about things like that. So if you already have a ADA compliant hood, you can actually take that wall control off, put this one in. And now you have it um, sensing you in your kitchen. Now, or if you don't have that opportunity, then just take a room sensor and plug it into your kitchen, and that'll do the same thing. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay. Right at the box. Great. Now, the only thing it won't do is it won't turn on your range hood. But hopefully, again, our practice to you and our education to you is: hey, turn on your range hood if it's not automatically going to go on um, as you start cooking. That'll yeah. help immensely in, in, in those VOCs and PM two point fives and CO two. You know. Um, pollutants that are being created. Fantastic. Jim, where can people go to learn more? I'm, I'm assuming they can go to the Brone website. I know I watched a video on this product, which was uh, pretty incredible. Do you want to post something in the chat? Um, so what we will do, yeah, right now we don't have, a, we're, we're actually building a microsite. Um, okay. It'll be launching shortly um, in the March timeframe. So as soon as we have that, um, we will make sure that we get it out to you. Um, okay. And you can, you can stream it out to, to the people that join this and Anybody yeah. else interested? That would be great. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention EBA uh, in association with Construction Instruction and the Allergy Standards uh, Limited out of Europe um, has been underwritten by Brone as a bronze sponsor. And we are creating an EBA Healthier Homes Certified Building Professional Program. Um, there's so much interest in healthier homes today. Uh, and we thank Brone for being a part of that uh, underwriting of that education session. Uh, that should be coming out probably about the same time the Overture launch is on the market. So really timely. And, and we thank you, uh, Jim and, and Patrick, for all you guys do at, uh, at Brone Newtone. Patrick, any final thoughts? No, I think, uh, I think Jim covered it pretty well there. We're very excited about the launch. And as you mentioned, you're... Um, healthy home education program. So uh, looking forward to it. Fantastic. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for spending time with everyone today. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. And we will have, I think we'll edit down the recording for our, uh, our middle part, but we'll get the recording up at eba.org shortly. Great. All right. Thank you, All right. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Nancy. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.